In this experiment, I observed constant motion velocity and used Newton's second law and the momentum principle to predict the motion of a tennis ball. In my experiment, I filmed the rolling of a tennis ball. I decided to use frames 44 to 65 of the video as these show the ball in constant velocity motion. The action I am looking at begins at 0 seconds and ends at 0 0.84 seconds. I put the origin in the center of the ball in the first frame that I was interested in, so this is frame 44. I kept the original axis orientation, therefore the ball moves in the negative x direction. I tracked the point masses at the center of the ball and the measurements I took were calibrated to the diameter of the ball, which is 0 0.065 meters. The ball's initial position was 0 0.02 in the positive x direction and 0 in the y and 0 in the z. I found the ball's initial velocity by using the first two readings from my video. Velocity is distance divided by time, so I used the change in distance between the first two readings, which is minus 0 0.029 meters, divided by the change in time, which is 0 0.04 seconds. And that gave me an initial velocity of minus 0 0.725 meters per second in the x direction. In my model, I made the assumption that the net force was zero, so all the forces that were acting on the ball balanced each other out. When looking at Newton's second law, which tells us the new velocity of an object after a small change in time, we see that if we substitute the net force from the surrounding zero, then we find that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity, which means that the object has a constant velocity. This is also a statement of Newton's first law, which says that if there is no net interaction from the surroundings on the system, then the object will remain in constant velocity motion. From Newton's second law, we can derive the equation for the momentum principle. If the net force is zero, we see from the momentum principle that the final momentum will be equal to the initial momentum. When creating my model, I used my observations from the video to provide the initial conditions of the ball. So its initial position, shown here, and its initial velocity. I included the mass of the ball in standard SI units as 0.058 kilograms. However, when looking at Newton's second law, when the net force is equal to zero, we see that the mass is irrelevant as the predictions of the model do not depend on the mass, as whatever the mass happens to be, the object will remain at constant velocity. I set delta t, which is the change in time, to be 0.01 seconds, as this time interval was much smaller than the time scale of the motion I was observing. When we run the module, we see that visually this model uh, motion seems very similar to the experimental motion of the ball. As you can see on this graph, there is a straight line with a constant gradient which indicates constant velocity. The gradient is negative as the ball is moving in the negative x direction. This graph uh, compares the model position of the ball over time, shown by the red line, and the experimental position of the ball from my video, shown by the blue dots. At these early times, the predicted positions are not really predictions, as I used observations from the video to set the initial conditions for the model. Just because I assumed that there was no net force in the ball does not mean that no forces at all were acting on the ball, such as gravity, which of course they were. Friction from the surface on which the ball was rolling and drag from air resistance were also acting on the ball. However, their effect over the time I was observing the system were negligible. Therefore, I did not include them in my model. This could be the reason why the model position is greater than the experimental position, as in real life, these forces did have an impact on the ball's velocity, as they caused it to travel slower and so cover a shorter distance in the time. What if? If we change the orientation uh, of the axes, we would have to have the ball velocity as being in the positive x direction, and we would see that the gradient is exactly the same except for now in the positive x direction instead of the negative x direction. And uh, the uh, visualization is uh, exactly the same uh, velocity, however, in the opposite direction. What does it mean?
My results confirm Newton's first law, that if the net force is equal to zero, then the velocity is constant. And also Newton's second law, that if the net force is not equal to zero, then the velocity is not constant. We can see this uh, when we use the model and change uh, the net force on the ball, shown here. Say, for example, we use uh, 3 and uh, 2. We now see the graph in a very different shape. This gradient is not constant. Uh, we see that the velocity increases over time and the ball moves uh, in the x and y direction. Thank you very much for listening.